Hi, Carl here for Pro V TV, and today I'm at the beautiful Rymes Nature Reserve to get some wildlife shots with the Kinefinity Mavo. Now these are of course really new cameras and so I'm sure a lot of you don't really know too much about them. So I thought I'd take this chance to give you guys a run through of the camera and why we're so excited by it. So what really makes these cameras exciting for me is the image quality. I mean, this, they are essentially small cinema modular cameras. Um, this is the Mavo, so it's the middle one of the lineup. It's got a 6K super 35 millimeter sensor inside it, and it can record 6K up to 50 frames a second in either ProRes up to 444XQ or in RAW in Cinema DNG or their own KRW 2.0 files. To be honest, most people I think are going to be using the ProRes. I think most of the time I'm going to be using this, it's going to be the ProRes. All the stuff you'll see in this video so far is ProRes. The quality of the ProRes files is just amazing and the RAW is even better. So like the, the ProRes just has got this lovely feel to it. The skin tones are brilliant. Color accuracy is absolutely brilliant. I've been blown away by the images out of this so far. So one of the big attractions of the camera is how modular it is. I mean, at its heart, it is literally this little square box in the middle, and that only actually weighs 900 or so grams. So it's a very small little compact machine at heart, but then you can rig it out how big or how small you want. On the brain, you get your controls on the side, your media slot, which is a seven millimeter SSD drive, so it's non-proprietary, you can use any media inside. You've got power in, DC in on that side, and a HDMI port and a couple of their own video ports on the front to connect their monitors and stuff like that up there. Then the lens mount is a really interesting one. Natively on the body itself is what's called a Kinney mount, which isn't good for that much other than using one of their nine adapters. But they've got a huge selection of adapters to pretty much change that Kinney mount to, to whatever mount you want. For example, we've got this here with the Fujinon MK lens, which is an E-mount lens. And so it's one of the only cameras, other than Sony's own cameras, of course, to have an E-mount. Now that's passive, it's not active, so you can't control your aperture, stuff like that. So you need a fully manual lens like we've got here, but it has E-mount. You've then got EF, you've got PL, and you've got Nikon F as well. So when we're using our big long lenses today for telephoto wildlife stuff, that's all EF. I'm actually using the EF with an electronic ND built into it as well, so that I can control ND in a completely variable electronic ND within the lens mount, which is pretty incredible. This side grip is how I've been powering the camera for the most of the day. It's got a Sony BPU style battery inside it. It takes in a higher voltage than Sony's actual BPU batteries. You do need to use Kinefinity ones, but they're really nice and small and they go into the side grip here. They'll power the camera for about an hour, maybe two hours if you're not using it very much. Then they've got the Kineback W. So this is a bit like their pro in and out box, if you like. Um, I haven't been using this for most of today because I haven't needed SDIs and I haven't needed sound and I haven't needed V-locks. Um, so it's really quick and simple just to unscrew it and put a little protective plate on over the connector area. But what this gives you, if you do want it on, is two XLR ports on the top, gives you V-lock battery power, it gives you um, two SDI ports, gives you a sync port, a external control port, and timecode in and out. Um, it also gives you two D-taps, which take power from the V-lock, 
and it gives you this little red slot on the top which is for Movcam's dark tower technology. We don't know too much about that at this point but in the future that should be able to wirelessly send video, sound, lens control, camera control, everything through this one little slot which is pretty amazing. This is their Kinefinity monitor on top, but you can also use third party ones, of course. I've been using a small HD focus for some of today, just because it's a bit brighter than this one um, and easier to see outside, but you can also use EVFs and all sorts here. You can connect through the HDMI or the SDI ports. Um, but this one cable it is quite convenient to use their Kinefinity monitors just because this one cable transfers both video and power. So you can really see how you can rig it up really large, like it is here or even larger or you can keep it really down small at just the square, maybe running it off of a DTAP cable from a gimbal, something like that, for those jobs that need it. I've obviously been using slow motion a lot today. I mean, it's, it's very tempting when you're filming birds like this, but it's also very tempting when you've got a camera that's quite as capable in slow motion as the Mavo is. In 6K, it can do up to 50 frames a second, but then as you drop down throughout it, you're gonna get a little bit more frames a second when you vertically crop. So you go to a 2.4 to one aspect ratio, which is why you'll see that narrower aspect ratio throughout a lot of the B-roll in this video. Um, that just helps get that little bit extra and with that you can go up to 100 frames a second in 4k and 192 frames a second in 2k one thing i've been using a lot is 5k at 74 frames a second that i found is a real sweet spot between really high resolution and really quite dramatic slow motion with three times slower than the 25 frames a second i normally deliver in on this and it looks really great i mean let me know in the comment section what you guys think of the footage which I've been able to get today down below but I'm super happy from what I've seen so far on the camera I can't wait to get it back to the computer and actually look at it properly but the couple of times I've taken this out I've always been really really happy with the results So that's about it for this first little look at the camera. I'm gonna do a much longer review, which is gonna go a lot more in depth on what I like and what I don't like, what are the comparisons to other cameras out there, and digging apart a little bit the camera. This has been more of a bit of a, an excited first look because I'm genuinely really impressed by this camera, and so I wanted to share some of that with you. Um, but keep your eye out for the main review. Let me know what you think of it, or if you've got any questions at all, leave them down below and I'll make sure to get back to you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.